The date was August 2021, when after a few conventions and photo shoots wearing my Mercy cosplay, I realized that I wanted to have something a bit more lightweight and nimble in my wardrobe. Mercy is my pride and joy, but wearing over 50 pounds of metal for a whole convention day on my back just wore me out too much. I began developing a new lightweight wing platform, much more minimalistic in its design, and it was supposed to be a more of a tech demo than a complete project. But it was turning out really promising. Enter Aviator Fair. I really like the video game Overwatch, so that's where I started to look for inspiration. So in the game, there's a character named Pharah, which has an alternate skin called Aviator. Massive wings and armor aside, it looked like a good candidate for a lightweight outfit that I was looking for. Um, some jeans and jacket underneath, uh, it looked nice and comfy. I started off by making a pattern based on the 3D model from the game, and I scaled it to my height. That way I knew exactly how large the wings will be and how much space I had for the electronics. Little by little, I began to flesh out a prototype to make sure that I can use this new platform for Ferris type of wings. Fitting electronics in a costume without altering the design is always a big challenge, but it seemed that I could pull it off. But more on electronics later. Since I want this build to be as lightweight as possible, I'm using EVA foam and 3D printed parts. For the main wing surfaces, I sandwiched and glued three layers of foam and worked on two wings at a time to maintain symmetry. Uh, there are two sets, the elevating wings and the static wings. To remove a lot of material fast, I used a sanding machine. I don't have a bench sanding machine, so I took my handheld one and mounted it in my vise, and it worked out fine. To reduce complexity, wings will be held in place just by sheer friction and no additional mechanisms. Most of the additional details are also made from the same foam. I prefer starting with bigger pieces and then dialing in the size with careful sanding. I use foam clay to fill in the gaps. After sanding it down, it's seamless to the touch, although it's visible, but paint will fix that part. So I glued on the 3D printed part and I made a mock-up foam wing stick. And what I've noticed is that when I connect them, it's just because the wing gets so long, it gets kind of wobbly, even though the individual parts are pretty rigid by themselves. So to reinforce the wings, I decided to add PVC tubes to the thin parts, as well as to make them from denser foam. I used the woodworking router with a ball and mill to make perfectly smooth grooves for the tube. By removing just the right amount of foam when glued together, the tube won't bulge out or the part looks sunken in. On the wings themselves, I used a square end mill. That is because I decided to go with aluminum extrusions for reinforcement. Square aluminum profiles are much more rigid than PVC tubes, and even though they're a bit heavier, uh, I decided that it's worth it. The other set of wings, the ones that don't get lifted, don't have any reinforcement rods in them, because it wasn't necessary. The surface will be covered with another layer of foam, so I'm not too worried about the finish. Another technique that I haven't seen anyone use before is to add glue on the threads of a wood screw before using it with EVA foam. I did some tests off camera and it seemed to improve the grip of the fastener. My hope is that these screws will distribute the stress over a larger surface area and stiffen the wing up. I mix distilled water with foam clay until I get this toothpaste-like consistency. When it's this watery, it adheres way better and it can be mushed into smaller crevices. I use EVA foam of different thicknesses, for example this top piece is only 2mm thick. It will go on top of this part and hide the channels for LED wiring. This time I'm using a Dremel with a router attachment, because I needed tiny channels and not a lot of material to be removed. I add scotch tape on top of the wire channels. That way the cables won't get glue on and we'll be able to slide around inside the wing for adjustments. The next big part were the jet engines. They have a lot of details and are seemingly made from a few layers or pieces, so that's what I try to recreate in foam. To make these recessed parts, I cut them out and glued them a few millimeters deeper. The engines curve in two directions, so I sliced out wedges and glued the gaps together. And to make everything look and feel seamless, I applied a lot of foam clay that I will sand down. I really took my time when making these, I made sure to stick to all the measurements and blueprints. 
in the final products they'll be close together to one another, so any mistake will be very visible by comparing them, and eyes get naturally drawn to differences. I added the extra details and sanded down the seams. All in all, I think they turned out really well, um, so I made holes for the LEDs and glued them down to the wings. Wherever the design required it, I used foam clay to hide the seams in the foam. Watered down clay and a very high grade sandpaper leaves a near perfect finish. To reduce the total weight of the elevating wings, I used a Dremel to sculpt out the excess foam. I managed to shave off nearly 100 grams of it per wing. The insides are much rougher and the walls are much thinner, but uh, weight is your enemy when it comes to animatronics and we need to fight it everywhere we can. Chip on board LEDs are a staple of my recent builds because of how bright they get and these ones will be simulating the jet engines. I pull out the excess wiring and glue down the nozzles. The wingtips will be illuminated by RGB LED tape. Um, I need them to change color for a reason I'll show you later. I designed and 3D printed transparent pieces that go over the LEDs. I needed them to be transparent, so I used PETG filament, which is the same stuff plastic bottles are made from. PETG is a bit harder to work with than regular PLA filament, and it took me a few failed prints before I nailed down the settings. But after I did, uh, after some sanding, it turned out great. To attach them I used clear epoxy as I didn't know what bonds PETG and EVA foam. Um, if you know of anything better, please comment below. A big quality of life improvement are these awesome steel quick release buckles. These are super heavy duty, but they can be released with the lightest of pinches, so they are really good if you want to get out of your outfit as soon as possible. I don't intend to remove them, so I triple stitched them in place. To make the electronics look tidy, I designed and 3D printed a case for them. There are labeled slots for the connectors, and there's gaps in the sides of it for wires. To fasten it to the back plate, I use bolts instead of glue because it's just, uh, you know, more reliable like that. For durability's sake and for cleaner looks, I ended up sleeving all the wires. Um, in case they get pinched, they'll be more resilient. For strain relief, I used epoxy to glue in the wires at the point where they come out of the wings. The motors and all the connectors fit with plenty of room to spare. The brains of this project is this Arduino controller soldered to a custom circuit board that I made, and the motion is achieved by using servo motors. Servo motors are unlike regular motors because they report their position back to the controller, and that makes them programmable. So with some clever coding, I was able to make them accelerate and decelerate for a more realistic and dynamic looking motion of the wings. Uh, these servos, even though they're really powerful, they draw so much current to lift up these massive wings. Um, it's really hard work for them. Um, so that meant that they could not use a battery management system because it would be a bottleneck. So I had to connect the servos to the battery directly. Removing a battery management board from a project is a bad idea. And to make sure that I don't end up in a battery fails compilation video somewhere online, I monitored the life of the cells with software instead. When the battery charge falls below a certain safe level, the controller will switch the wing caps to purple as an indicator that it's time to swap batteries. Pretty cool, right? Oh yeah, one more thing about the battery. So it's a two cell LiPo pack, which means that it's roughly around eight volts, um, which is not enough to power the 12 volt LEDs. So to make them glow, I use these two step-up converters, which basically take the power from the uh, battery and increase its voltage. The animation is triggered with a simple push button in the right hand, and the emergency power switch is in the left hand. Uh, they're both detachable and interchangeable, so in case you break one, you only need one spare for both parts in your convention repair kit. Now I must admit I underestimated how heavy these wings will turn out to be. Um, they're foam still, not metal, but still the servos are burning through a lot of electricity to lift them up. I get about 20 to 30 minutes of motion and lights so on a single battery charge. I do have a lot of batteries, but still that's not ideal. Still I'm super stoked with how they're turning out. Um, they're super lightweight and nimble, uh, they're easy on my back, uh, and not a big trouble to get in and out of. Uh, not that many components to break, so I hope they'll be reliable. In general, they're everything that I wanted them to be. Oh yeah, and with LED animations, because uh, they get so bright, uh, they'll look amazing in a dark room or on stage or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, even though I covered a lot today, I feel, uh, there's still a lot of details in this project that I'm really proud of, but I just didn't have time to mention. As for the future of this project, 
part of me is kind of leaning towards modifying this entire mechanism to use worm drive motors instead. And by modify, I mean completely redesign it. See, the thing is, worm drive motors, when they're not moving, they do not consume power. While servo motors that I use with this uh, set of wings, uh, they need power even to stand still. And that's why my batteries don't last long. But it would require complete rework of basically everything I've done. The only thing that would stay the same is probably just the, you know, the size of the holes that I would need to fit them in. But uh, all the electronics, at least the motors of a part, uh, would have to be reworked entirely. So that's why I'm not sure if I want to commit to that just for some battery life, you know. In any case, there's still a lot to cover in this project. I guess I'm kind of leaving you with a cliffhanger. Will he, won't he redesign everything? Uh, but yeah, please subscribe for part two. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time. Wow, what a great video, I agree. If you would like to see more of my stuff, I made a lot of videos over the years. So here's a few links for you to click on. Ooh, editing, editing, editing. <laughs>